Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you're well. Today, I wanted to talk to you about uh, a subject that's quite important in everybody's life, which is um, survival mechanisms and how they can be of great help to you when you grow up as a, as a human being, but also how can they end up hindering you in a really important way sometimes in your life uh, when you get caught up in them too much and you're not really conscious of uh, the effect they have on your life. So I'm just going to uh, address this question with you today because uh, it is a subject that I'm actually um, um, contemplating right now in uh, the process with uh, in my grieving process uh, with uh, my mom that has uh, passed away. And um, so, you know, uh, a survival mechanism or a defense mechanism, depending on how you, you see it, is um, a, a natural and in a way healthy way to, for, the, for the child to develop um, a sense of security in its life and to develop um, secure um, boundaries for himself and uh, discover a way in which they can preserve their sanity, but also their uh, physical well-being, their, their uh, psychological well-being. So that's, uh, that's a, a totally normal thing. And there's many of them. I'm, I'm no psychologist. I don't pretend to be one. I'm just um, talking about all this on the, the perspective, on a personal perspective. And uh, one of these, well, many of these mechanisms can vary from, uh, for example, passive resistance. It can be um, evasiveness, you know, when you tend to, uh, to flee situations or people. It can be anger, uh, being aggressive, you know. Uh, it can be passive aggressive at attitudes. Anyway, there's many ways in which a human being can um, create a system, a system of self-defense in order to... Um, apprehend life and people in, in, in their environment. And um, the, the reason why I chose to, um, to talk to you about it today is because in my grieving process, I have come to realize uh, quite deeply uh, what my own um, survival mechanism has been for many years. And as much as it has perhaps helped me in the beginning, I realize how much it has hindered me now uh, for many, many years in creating states of, of depression, of isolation, of anger, of uh, deep pain and suffering. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm not unique. I'm sure every uh, adult has, has been struggling in some way, consciously or unconsciously, with these, uh, with these elements in their lives. So I wish to discuss that with you today in order to perhaps uh, offer you through my own example, you know, uh, a way in which you can also um, examine that part of, uh, of your well-being and of your life and see how it is perhaps helping you or hindering in you in your life. So it's just very humbly my way of of uh, sharing my experience with uh, that particular mechanism. Um, usually they are used in order to protect us from pain, uh, from rejection, from being invaded by other people. Uh, you know, there's, there's, it's basically is the natural uh, brain and heart, I guess, a way to say, you know, to keep people at bay or to keep situations that are hurtful at bay in order not to be uh, completely destroyed or, you know, devastated from, from relationships, from events, from situations, from trauma. And so, especially in trauma situations, uh, defense mechanisms can be of great help. Uh, at some point, though, in your life, it is important for you to um, consciously realize what these uh, mechanisms are and choose if this is something that's still helping you or if it's hindering you, hindering you more than it's helping. And this is at the stage in my life in which I am. Um, I will give you my example, my, my personal example. I've been using um, this, uh, this survival mechanism in my life in order to, um, like everybody, to protect myself from pain, from rejection, because I'm also a very uh, hypersensitive person, I tend to be uh, offended and hurt and uh, emotionally destroyed and devastated quite easily from just a comment can really hurt me for years. And, 
And normally I'm not a person that will tend to um, not forgive others for many years. You know, I, it's not in my temper, in my, in my character. And I would say this is something that, and I say this lovingly to about my mom, but my mom was a person who was more, um, she could, she had a difficulty in forgiving sometimes and um her um defense survival mechanism was more like um passive resistance and it was a way to say you're not going to hurt me anymore so i'm just going to sort of close myself up and you know you're not going to get to me and i totally understand that and with a lot of love and unconditional love i just totally welcome uh and understand you know how how much suffering she must have been going through in order to um act in that way and so i can my way of, of dealing with my own um, survival mechanism was to actually protect myself through a form of evasiveness from fleeing situation instead of using my mom's, which was more like passive resistance. And this particular um, survival mechanism of fleeing situation and evading situation has caused me a lot of pain as well. And uh, this is what I want to talk about. Um, like I said, since I'm hypersensitive and I tend to be easily uh, hurt by situation, by people, if people are, and I also have a lot of expectations in life in general about myself, like I'm very hard on myself and I have a lot of uh, ideals and uh, hard, um, high expectations for myself. And unfortunately, as you probably know, when we have expectations, high expectations about ourselves, it automatically means that we're going to have a lot of them uh, for about other people. And having high expectations about other people can be a very, very uh, destructive um, pattern because you get hurt when you don't see them um, corresponding or acting in a way that corresponds to the high ideals you have for them. But it also hurts them because they feel judged and they feel rejected and that's quite painful. So that's been like a sort of running thing in my life. It's, it's I've been in situations where... Um, and this happened with family members, parents, with friends, with boyfriends, with uh, co-workers, with many people in my life, is that when a person would not correspond to um, either my expectations or my ideals, or if someone would say something that was hurtful to me or that was um, perhaps challenging me in my beliefs or in my, in my yeah, in, in what I believe and what I support. Or maybe if, um, if, I, if I felt that, you know, I was not being accepted uh, for how, how I was or, you know, I would close myself. And another thing that would happen is that um, I, because of my, situation with my parents and I have to say mostly with my mom um, she was a very very present person and I felt a lot of feeling of fear of being invaded in my personal space and not being able to keep boundaries to have find my own center so all of these things all of these inner inner um difficulties and and fragilities and and you know um difficulties within me created uh, or made me develop this survival mechanism of fleeing, of, of, of evading situations and people. And I've been doing that since I was a teenager. You know, I started to create um, uh, systems of, you know, rejecting people, pushing people away, not being, for example, um, doing like uh, hugs and being uh, physically um, giving a lot of um, tenderness, you know, um, to, for example, my parents, that was something I stopped doing at some point when I was a child. And, you know, that, that was very hurtful to them, you know, or later in my life in relationships, I started to, um, when, you know, a, a partner would not correspond to my high ideals, whatever that was, uh, I would just leave them, you know, in a second. And because that was hurting me too much not to, not to have them on the, on the same same vibe you know further in my life i've lost lots of friends and it was my my choice because again uh either because i felt rejected in my way of living my beliefs you know for example i give you the example of this question of the pandemics and the the, the vaccination uh, some of my friends were, were were all for that and they were not believing what i was 
saying, you know, about the uh, conspiracy, what they thought was conspiracy theory. And that was very hurtful for me not to be believed, not to, to be listened to or, or heard. And my, my immediate um, reflex has been to flush them and out of my life, out of my life, you know, um, and, you know, I've had the same problems, some members of my family and things. So basically with years, what happened is that I ended up uh, creating a life for myself where I would just simply keep away or reject or um, get away from or flee or um, people or situation in, that would not correspond to um, what either make me happy or that would make me feel like I was accepted and that I was valuable and that what I had to say had a meaning or that, uh, they were in, in my, in, in, in my range of like high expectations and things. And I ended up creating a situation where I enclosed myself in a very, very small circle. And, um, in which not many people were left, you know, I basically made some void around me uh, relationship wise, not only in terms of uh, uh, boyfriends and, but also friends and family members and things because of that attitude, because of that survival mechanism, which was stronger than me. It was something I could not, you know, it was unconscious. It was like my way of surviving. And I was not really thinking about this. I was just reacting, you know, instead of just being, conscious about what was happening and you know so I would like to share with you an image I have of basically what was happening is that if picture a a castle you know a, a castle in center of, of a of a land of a beautiful land and this castle is made of stone and is very um, heavy and very strong but within the castle it's completely filled with jello okay and that castle was my egotic or mental or uh, persona, persona attitude. The jello within that castle, I would define as my self-confidence, my capacity to be uh, sovereign, to be confident about myself, to be confident about life, um, to be strong, to be, to be beyond what people think, to be beyond hurt and, and just you know, be strong within me. The way I was when I was a child, when I was a child, I was, I was very in tune in that, in that strength, uh, which I lost during my teenage years. And then imagine around that castle, which is filled by jello, um, a big fortress that I've built over the years made with large stone blocks. And this uh, fortress that I built around my castle became so uh, enclosed that only the space of this castle became the place where I could live and, and, you know, have a life. And this castle was very small, you know, I ended up being living in a one and a half studio, which is my case here now, with pretty much not many people in my life anymore. I, I isolated myself to a point which was, um, quite intense. And uh, the reason for that is because for all the reasons mentioned above, because I was scared to um, be rejected because people were not living to my expectations, because I felt uh, rejected because people were not having the same opinions as I am or the same interests or the same tastes. And all of this created a void around me. And I cannot blame anybody nor my friends, family, boyfriends, or, or anybody else for what happened to me because I made that choice unconsciously, unconsciously through a reaction, but still I made that choice and I have to live with that now. And, um, but it's really interesting because now I realize that, you know, the, the thing I would, that would be really healthy for me to do is to take all that jello and make something strong out of it because within me, in my soul lives the lives a very strong soul you know i'm full of qualities i have a lot of good things within me i'm a sovereign being i'm strong i have you know i have a lot of joy in me i have a lot of things to offer to people as a as a partner as a friend as a family member but everything has come into jello and that has to stop so now what i focus on is to um 
you know, still, um, how can I say this? Except the fact that, you know, yes, I did build um, a castle around my jello, but now I don't want this to be jello in, in the middle. Now it's going to be my light. I just want my light to shine, to be strong. So, so, so strong again, like I was as a child, that nothing can really destroy me anymore. And because I don't need to be destroyed anymore by comments, rejection, suffering, hurt, uh, different opinions, expectations that, you know, that I should not have on the other people, etc., cetera, et cetera, I can become like a stronghold in myself. And then what happens? I can slowly take down one brick by brick this stone fortress that I build around my castle. And finally, I can, in a way, permit people to come in again. Because uh, when you're strong like that within, you don't need to be scared of being invaded by people. You don't need to be rejected by people. You don't need to be hurt by people. Because basically, you're so strong inside that whatever comes to you, life, whatever life brings to you, what people bring to you, experiences bring to you, when you let life shake you down, shake you up and shake you down sometimes, then you become so resilient that things go through you and then you can live them. Emotions can come to you. They can come through you. You can see them, live them, experience them without being completely devastated and destroyed and hurt because you're, you're strong now. If you have sadness, you can cry. If you have anger, you can express it, but you're not devastated by it. And then after that, that emotion can come through you and go out. You know, same thing with situation. A friend you love is being hurtful to you or what you feel is being hurtful to you or um, doesn't believe you or judges you or tells you a comment that hurts you. You can either say like I did before, just like get out of my life. I don't want you in my life anymore. You don't understand me, go away. And then you find yourself isolated or you can say, okay, I'm listening to what you're saying. You know, we can have a, a conversation I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to convince you of anything, but we can have a conversation. And if we don't agree, let's agree that to this. Let's agree to disagree. And then it comes through you and out of you. And you can still respect that person in your life. You can still love them for all that they are, even if it's different from you. And then you can, at the same time, keep your integrity, keep your boundaries, keep who you are, keep, you know, all your strength and light. And then nobody has to be rejected in either way, you know? So um, this is a, a revelation for me because it's been, I've been suffering from this uh, survival mechanism for, you know, 30, more than 30 years of my life. And it's been hurting me. And now since my mom's passing and that I've been doing all this work in inner reflection, I realized this, this has not been serving me for many years. So this is something I, I prioritize now to focus on, uh, debunking or you know not debunking but uh not destroying either just taking away one brick by brick that forced fortress i build around myself around my life because this is the reason why as well everything is blocked in my life you know uh maybe financial plenitude maybe relationship plenitude maybe you know friendship relationships family um joy uh also my um my uh, channeling is probably also kind of half blocked from all this, you know, fortress I've put around myself, not only physically in my life in terms of not seeing anybody and not letting anybody in, but also through psychologically and even energetically, you know, I've blocked things in my life. So it's time to change. I'm ready to start changing. And I'm being honest and very candid with my soul. And I tell my soul and my higher self, I don't know how to do this yet. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to welcome people in my life again. I don't know how to do this. But humbly, I put myself at the service of source and service of my soul. And I decide to open my life to what comes and to people and to situation and to cultivate that inner sovereignty and strength in order to shine my light and not be completely devastated by everybody's or life situations and and people's opinions and things so i wanted to share that with you today and i hope this has been helpful to you in any way or if not 
it just gives you a um, an idea of you know things I go through these days. So um, hopefully they will be that will be inspiring for your own life and uh, perhaps uh, give you a chance to reflect on that question of um, survival mechanisms. Thank you for being there. I love you guys. Take great care of yourself and I send you good love, good vibes and much love. Take care. Bye.